days 4, 5 and 6 of Navratri, we worship Devi Ma in the form of Mahalakshmi and today the Naivedyam or Bhog which are going to make for her is Wheat Rava Payasam or Broken Wheat or Godama Rava Payasam. For this I have taken one cup of this broken wheat or godhama rave. You can take this darker brown color, it will look better in the payasam. Now first we will wash it and bring it back. First we will heat about 3 teaspoons of ghee in a pan. I am taking the base of my pressure cooker so that we can cook everything in that. Add a few cashew nut pieces to it. You can also add a few raisins. When the cashews and raisins are well roasted, drain it out from the ghee and keep it aside. Here I have about 2 tablespoons of fresh coconut which I have chopped into small bits. Fry that also in the remaining ghee. When the coconut bits are also well fried, Drain it out from the oil and keep it aside. Next in the same remaining ghee, add the washed uh, godama rava, that is the wheat rava and fry that also well in the ghee. After about a minute, now we will add water to this. So for one cup, I am adding. Three cups of water. When steam starts coming out from the vent, put on the weight and cook it for one whistle and switch it on. Meanwhile, we will we'll make some coconut milk for the payasam. So, this is half a large coconut. I have just cut it into bits. First, we will run it dry so that we get it as grating. Then, add water and make it into a paste so that we can extract the milk. So if you, if you just pulse it two or three times, you will get lovely grating, coconut grating like this. Now add a cup of water and blend it once again, then we can extract the coconut milk. We have made it into a paste. Just sieve it out and extract the milk. This is the first coconut milk or the thick extract. We will keep this aside. Now put this back into the jar. Again add another cup of water and again we will extract the second milk. Now we will extract the second milk which will be a little more dilute. Now the pressure has released completely. So let us open the cooker and see. See, the broken wheat or godi rava has cooked very well. Now to this, I am going to add jaggery powder. We can add 1 cup of jaggery powder depending on your taste. And give it a good mix. So blend the jaggery powder and this cooked rava together. Now, I am going to add this second coconut milk that is the dilute coconut milk and keep the flame only on sim. Now, in case you do not have access to jaggery powder, you can use regular jaggery, add water, just allow it to come to a boil and then add this uh, cooked broken wheat or cooked godi rava to it and continue with the same process. See now it has started boiling once again. So now I bring it just to sim on a very low flame. Now add the first coconut milk or coconut extract that is the thick extract. After adding the thick extract you should not boil it too much otherwise it will curdle. So just for about 30 seconds till it all mixes together and then we can switch it off. Now 
Now again switch this off. Add some cardamom powder for flavor. Mix it well. Add these fried coconut bits and also our fried uh, cashew and raisins. So our absolutely divine wheat rava or broken wheat godama rava payasam is ready. So as usual, we will take it out in our bowl to be offered to Devi Ma. Always keep a separate bowl for all your bhog or nevediums. Don't use the regular ones in which you are cooking or eating. Namaste. On day 4, we worship Ma Durga in the form of Ma Kushmanda. Ma Kushmanda is credited with having created the entire universe. Her name itself signifies that Ku means little, Ushma means energy or warmth and Anda is refers to an egg. So Kushmanda, she is credited with having created the cosmic egg within which she created the universe or the egg shaped universe. She is also said to reside in the sun and the Surya Mandala which and therefore give it gives it its energy both in the form of light and heat. She is dazzling like a brilliant million suns. For example, in the Lalitha Sasnama we have the name Udyadbhanu Sahasrabha. So that is her radiance. And it is said she created this universe when it was totally enveloped in darkness. Ma Kushmanda just gives a slight smile. And with that smile, the entire universe is created. The whole universe gets filled with light. So, she is the one responsible both for the creation of the universe and for all the energy to sustain this universe. She is represented as having eight arms and also riding a lion which again indicates fearlessness. Well, last year when we did the Durga Saptashati and the Chandi part, we have seen how Adi Shakti created Ma Durga from her left eye, Ma Lakshmi from her central eye and Ma Saraswati from her right eye. And then Saraswati who is a very, very benevolent and smiling form of Devi, Ma Durga or Kali who is the one out there to destroy all the demons. And especially when she had to fight against such Asuras as Rakta Bija, Chanda, Munda, Shumbha, Nishumbha and so on. And then they all merge into one to make her that powerful Shakti. So a devotee who prays to Ma Kushmanda is blessed with power and prosperity. And Ma Kushmanda also removes all his sorrows, trials, tribulations and any other hurdles which may be in his path. Yesterday, we were talking about uh, Shailaputri and Ma Parvati. So, at this time, I am reminded of another interesting story. We all know that uh, Parvati, the daughter of Himavan, goes into the mountains and does immense penance as Brahmacharini too, we have seen her. And the story of such severe tapas or penance, where she is standing under the hot sun and uh, not caring about the winds blowing, not caring about the icy weather and the snow, she continues her tapas, such intense tapas that news of that reaches Shiva. Where is Shiva? He is in the mountain but deep in his meditation after he has lost his wife Sati. So it is very difficult to rouse him from that meditation. But this intense devotion of Parvati in the form of tapas or penance stirs him out of his meditation. Then to test Parvati, he comes down in the guise of an old Brahmin. And he comes in front of Parvati and asks her, Why are you doing such intense tapas? To which she replies, O sage, it is because I want to get 
uh, Shiva as my husband. So then the old man asks her, what is wrong with you? Why are you doing such intense tapas to marry a man who has smeared ashes all his body, has no wealth to call his own and is wearing a tiger skin? Why are you wasting your time? Why don't you just get up and go away from here? To which Parvati becomes really enraged and she snaps at him. She says, what do you think you are talking? What? Whom are you talking about? Don't you know that I am in my previous incarnation, I was Sati and Shiva is my husband. So I want to again get married to the same Shiva and become his wife once more. So now uh, Shiva who was in the guise of that old man understood that Parvati had really great affection for him and then he reveals his true form and uh, Shiva and Parvati are both reunited. Now just as we tell small bedtime stories to our children, I remember it was uncle's turn to tell the stories for the children when they were small and he used to tell them so many stories all with happy endings and finally every story would have been and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> Until today I remember that phrase. So it says that after that Shiva and Parvati lived happily ever after. So in today's context, how can we relate to this? Young girls who are desirous of getting married. What is important is your commitment to the person whom you are getting married to and your love and affection. Priority should not be uh, personal physical attributes or for monetary gains but rather for the qualities in your spouse and continue with that love and commitment forever. Mahapiriva Sharanam. Thank you for watching the video. We will meet again with another interesting episode from Geeta's Kitchen. Thank you.